how dare me? I, I came back, I was a Vietnam vet, and I brought the first Chinese girl to my hometown. And I get phone calls three, four o'clock in the morning. How Susie Wong? How much money is she charging? And then they had it both ways. They call me Me Lai Murder, but then because I married a Chinese girl, they call me Goo Club. Vietnam War was one thing. Dealing with America when we came back was something else. I wonder how many of the guys I know are they still alive? Are they drug addicts? Are they alcoholics? The data on Vietnam vets is really, really horrible. When they were sending me to all these psychiatrists and trying to determine if I had PTSD, they said they were used to guys feeling bad about fellow soldiers dying, which I felt. But they said they'd never run into somebody who felt bad about the Vietnamese he'd killed. When I first come back, my mother, the very first morning she walked in and woke me up screaming. I had to sleep with a handgun in my hand where I couldn't sleep at night. See, I, I refight Vietnam every night. I do it during the day when I'm having conversations with other people. It intrudes. It's always there. I don't know what I did this morning, but if you want to go back there, I can tell you everything that happened. See, this is, it hasn't rotted. This is cane material. I cut away the white to get to the red core, but this is, this is great for cane. And if it's not too rotten, this is cedar here, too. So if I couldn't sleep, then I, I just funneled all my energy into, to, to art. So I think the, the arts kept me alive. It's a nice, hear the sound? That means the core's in good shape. And then I can carve off the top pieces. So sometimes when I'm depressed or feeling most angry, sometimes that's when I do my most artwork or some of my best artwork. I guess it started in Nam. I was kind of interested in the medium and materials. At first I would do Western things with those mediums, but then slowly I was drawing more water buffaloes and Asian people. I don't paint sunshiny days. They're always stormy, rainy, clouds, storms, dark skies. It wasn't something I planned, it just kind of went that way. And, and a lot of the people, including my parents, they didn't like my artwork. I don't like the world around me, so I don't paint it. So I create my own world. Of course, growing up in Wyoming, it was Frederick Remington and Charlie Russell. If it wasn't Western art, it wasn't artwork. While I was stationed in Vietnam, my two R&Rs I took, I went to Taiwan. I was eating Chinese food and I was going to the Palace Museum every day so I could see all this great artwork. And I visited with the president of the university. Can I just come here for a year? I just want to get all the art I can get. And he says, sounds great. As far as I know, I'm the first and only American ever accepted as a graduate art student in the University of Chinese Culture in Taiwan, up in Yangman Song Mountain. My other teachers, they were some of the old masters from mainland China, so it was really a unique opportunity, and they did everything humanly possible to help me. The Chinese government invited me back. This is when I was teaching in, on the Navajo Reservation in Tuba City. Some Chinese people thought I'd kind of invented a new style of Chinese painting, so I had, like, one summer, seven shows in seven cities. And newspapers and TVs and magazines, and my wife had to threaten to divorce me every day to keep me going because it was driving me out of my mind. When I was going to school in Taiwan, they'd say, well, not bad for an American, but your work looks very Western. And then when I go to the University of Wyoming, they'd say, well, your work looks pretty good, but it looks very Oriental. Not the brush. I used to tell students, artists don't do art because they want to. They do it because they have to. I don't want to paint the world around me. I don't want to interpret the world around me. I want to paint the world that I create in my own imagination. I'm going to paint my own world. 
I see a lot of guys with PTSD have bad memories and they're amazed that I could remember so much and visually I remember so much. In fact, the psychologist I went to, Brian, he says, you know, Tom, you're always building a wall. Maybe once in a while, you might just peek your head or go look out there, there's a world out outside of this wall. A couple weeks later, I showed up with this really large Chinese ink and watercolor painting. It's called Tom's World. I said, the last thing I want to talk about is Vietnam. So we talk about art. And, and all the things that we talked about, I put in the painting. There's an ape with a harlequin hat. That's me. It's my wife's portrait in the little sphere. But he says, boy, that doorway sure is a hell of a long way down the hallway, and it's really, really a tiny door. But I says, well, at least that's, that's the biggest concession I can give you. And he says, well, you ever going to use that key and go outside that door? I says, not if I can help it. <laughs> My birds. Four years ago, I didn't have any birds. Two dogs. Now I got two dogs, a chinchilla, and 30 birds. For a guy who grew up in Wyoming and South Dakota is considered east, I never thought I'd be in North Carolina. And I like it a lot. And I live in a small town called Graham. And, and after all the years of desert, I love all the green. And I discovered all the great cedar wood, so I, I was going to quit sculpture, but now I took up some carving again. And my daughter married a farmer, so if I have a bad day, I go seize cows and goats. I just go walk through the woods and hang out on the farm. I have uh, my yard, I have my daughter's farm, and I got my birds. There's, there's my, my social life. Mm -hmm.